evening and for uh, taking an interest in the arts locally. Uh, if you haven't been upstairs yet, there are um, displays of work, everything from pottery to stained glass to furniture to paintings, uh, chalk drawings. So if you haven't, I uh, would ask you to please take a look and uh, see what we, we have. The reason we've done this in the community is about three years ago, I uh, was talking to Kathy and said I thought we should have an art show of the local artists. And she said, go right ahead and do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't Kathy, if you say something like that, you're not going to wind up doing something. But, uh, so we organized the first one. This is the third year. And I'm really pleased with the amount of artists and the variety of work we have. Uh, to add interest to it and to uh, peak interest from people, uh, we decided that we would talk something about Theodore Robinson. Seeing as how that Theodore Robinson lived in our community when he was a young boy. And uh, so I've done a little research on him. And uh, I've given a few spe speeches about him. And then we had people that locally that own pieces of Robinson's work that were gracious enough to loan them to us this evening. So uh, I really have something uh, to talk about in terms of seeing an original. Uh, for those of you that don't know Theodore Robinson, uh, this is something I came across oh, a number of years ago. And it's, it's a quick little script. It's uh, notes from Miss Hattie Boyd and a report to the Literary Club of Evansville, Wisconsin. And it says, Theodore Robinson, born June 3rd, 1852 in Ernsburg, uh, Vermont. And he died April 2nd, 1896 in New York City. Uh, <clears throat> He came with his parents to Evansville in 1856 at the age of four. His father was an, uh, the officiating minister at the Methodist Episcopal Church and resided at the, uh, in the uh, Methodist parsonage on the corner of Main and Third Street. His artistic fa facilities were early developed and manifested themselves in numerous sketches upon all subjects, many of which are still treasured by his early friends. 18 71, he attended the art school in Chicago, afterwards in New York City, where he worked, gave pro his work gave promise and unusual talent. And soon afterwards, he went to Paris, where he entered the studio of Durand, and afterwards that of Jerome. In 1878, he returned to New York, uh, where he remained until 84, when he returned to France. At this time, he became interested in the impressionistic movement in art and his friendship and counsels of Monet, the great leader and expounder of Impressionism. That movement seemed to be denoted the true path in which his genius manifested itself. In 92, he returned to New York, devoting his talents to studies of rare beauties of the native land, and here remained for the uh, few short years that were left. 